All right, today we're looking at the Shenzhrone Sakaria. You can see this is a camera drone for the RED camera. This is about a $5,000 camera. Obviously, this is not the camera itself. This is an analog. How this puppy works is obviously this just sits right into here like this, and it's basically the essence of putting motors and props around the camera itself. It's specifically made for this camera, or this any camera can mount into this solution. What's nice about this is it can also angle down, so you can have adjustable angles here. So I can actually angle it all the way back for a really sharp angle, or all the way forward for a down sloping angle as well, if you're trying to get shots on the ground. What we're rocking here is the Avenger 2806.5, 1300 KV, and of course there's eight of them. So there's one flight controller that then outputs to two different ESCs that runs the motors and you can kind of see in there. So let's get it mounted up and see what she looks like. All right. See what this thing can do. Yeah, a little bit of vibration there. Slight bit of wind. But I don't like it. I think we can do better than that. Yeah, I don't like that. I'll see if we can make it better. We did some step step moves before, but let's get some more. Wait a minute, did you see that? So backing up here just a little bit, you can see right here in the D term, you can see all this oscillation and jitter. And if I actually go into here and I turn off the video, you can see these traces on the pitch axis. Again, down here, this D-term is just on the pitch axis. If you go back a little bit further, you can see that when I was doing the roll axis moves, there wasn't any weird D-term behavior down in here. But on the pitch axis, we're definitely getting some odd uh, oscillations. You can see it there. And then as I'm doing other pitch moves. And when you're looking up at the gyro signal up here, you can kind of see these jerks and juts. So that is an indicator to me that there is an issue on the pitch access for this flight control board. Either it's an electrical issue or just the MEMS in the gyro or something is an issue there. So we'll take a little closer look at that a little bit later, but that's the kind of stuff you need to be looking out for and a good reason to always log your stuff to make sure it's all working right. I'm gonna do some rolls, but man. Yeah, some kicks going on there. Right, 
three and a half volts per cell, so it's not, uh, Keep an eye on that voltage. Uh, 3.5 volts per cell. So I don't want to push it too long. I did some line of sight on this. And I don't want to get it too low. So one more turn here. And I'll bring it in. Yeah. All right. So we'll have some black box logs there to check out. I, I, these shakes and shimmies and stuff. Uh, there's a little bit of breeze today, but not not very much. You can see some of the bushes. And I know the filtering is super low, so let's check that out. I'll make it less and see what uh, see if it makes it any better. So this is where I ultimately left off with the filter settings and the PID tune for this craft. But ultimately that pitch access issue was really hindering the tune and was never really able to get it honed in to where I think it could have been. That's the big issue with gyro and electrical issues on your quad. It just overall hinders your tune and you're really, in most cases, not gonna get it to where you want it to be. And it's really the thing where you need to fix the mechanical issue, which is the electrical noise or the gyro chip itself. With the tune I just showed, you can see it still had oscillation issues on the D-term. Since I was kind of pushing it and moving things up as high as I could, they were still persisting there, but I didn't want to compromise too much by moving the PIDs down because knowing that the flight controller was going to be replaced. Now when the flight controller was replaced with the same exact filter settings and PID tune, you can see this is what we were getting now. However, unfortunately, the issue seemed to kind of migrate to the roll axis. Not as severe, but it was still there. You can see it really rears its ugly head when you start doing some hard uh, moves on that specific axis. So on the roll axis here, you can see these juts here in the roll signal. And then obviously that is translating into D-term oscillation down below. In many scenarios, if you turn off Expo, you can actually see it a little bit more clearly. And when you see things like that, where your, your red lines or your raw gyro signal is really just jutting down in a big way and then back up, that happens to coincide exactly with when your motors are spiking to a rest or enter a move. That's definitely an electrical issue that you need to tackle on the quad. Here's another little example, of kind of the same thing, just rolling the other direction. Now, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how you can differentiate between mechanical and electrical noise on your gyro signal, do go ahead and pop over to the UAV Tech website and you can check out my mechanical versus electrical noise on the gyro signal right down here. So I do wish I had some awesome video of some buttery smooth flight, but you can see the issues with the gyro on this specific one are still getting worked out a little bit. But hopefully with this video, this can demonstrate the importance of logging your craft to see how the performance is actually doing so you're not struggling against something that's really just a mechanical issue. If you have any questions, please do drop them below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed checking out the Shen Drone Sicario. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.